What's up, everybody? We are in my guy, Rudy Gobert's sneakers office here once again for another video here from L.A. I am just making sure all the settings are correct before we jump into today's video, which is breaking down some new information on the Idaho 4 victims speaking out, specifically hitting on two videos. They're both short. We're going to hit them together in one video here. Um, a ton of you sent them to me. It was right after the hearing coming out kind of at the same time. It looks like this trial is going to be delayed. So first we're going to hear from Shannon Gray about what the victims, specifically the Gonsalves family, thinks about the case getting delayed and Koberger pushing for that delay. And then number two, we're going to hear from the Gonsalves family themselves about some shocking new details about their daughter, how she was found, and what maybe we can learn about this um, and what happened that night. So a bit of a graphic warning um, for anybody that wants to listen to that. It's it's a tough watch. I haven't watched it all the way through. I've just seen like a 30-second clip of it. And I also haven't seen what Shannon Gray has to say. So we're going to be watching these videos for the first time here together. So buckle up, hit the like button, and let's jump right into it. If you were making plans this summer um, for the Idaho quadruple murder trial, change your plans. It is not happening this summer. It may not even happen next summer. And the reason we know that is because there was a hearing today. Here it is. Steve Gonzalez was there with a member of the Cronodal family and with his lawyer. And uh, they got good news, and that is that the indictment is not being tossed out. Okay, it is going to go to trial, but then the pitched battle over when prosecutors wanted this summer, defense attorney said, no way in hell can I be ready before next year. And that's hard. That's hard because they have been waiting for answers, just like the rest. It's a gag order, right? I had a chance to speak with Steve Gonzalez's attorney, Shannon Gray, a little earlier on. Take a listen. First thing I noticed is Shannon Gray looks like he's joining the long hair, don't care team especially for lawyers with long hair, don't care. So I'm a fan of that. Shannon, what was the, the process like for Steve Gonzalez and his family today? Um, there was so much on the line. Everyone thought we'd get an answer about a trial date and we didn't. Well, you know, I try to prep them, um, you know, for the way things go in this, during this process that, you know, we were either going to get a trial date set or we were going to not get a trial date set or the judge was going to take it under consideration, um, which he's done quite often in the past. And so, um, you know, and I'm sure he informed them that the vast majority of the time when the defendant asks for a continuance, once he's waived speedy trial, because he can't possibly get ready and he still needs more information. It's very unusual for a judge to totally disregard that. The judge made it clear that he cares about the victims. He feels for the victims. He wants this case to go to trial for the victims, but everybody wants to protect this verdict for the victims. We do not want to do this again. We do not want to open it up for appeal. We want this done right. Everybody, the public, the victims, the state, the defense, everybody wants this done right. Doesn't mean it's not going to be appealed, but we don't want to give any good appellate issues if there is a conviction. So going in today and hearing about all of the issues and then really surprisingly hearing about the request by the defense of a 2025 trial date, I which is surprised about a long time away. Uh, I think was was a big gut punch to the family. Um, you know, I, I don't know if that that really. It's been an emotional day because setting in the idea that they might have to wait, you know, uh, another year or more uh, for again, not surprising. Absolutely a gut punch, and sucks for them. And it never goes as quickly as they want it to in situations like this. So it absolutely sucks. I feel horrible for them. Um, it's not a huge surprise, unfortunately. And that's why the whole speedy trial thing and the state pushing for Koberger to waive a speedy trial, it's like, that's all well and good, but eventually it turns back around, you know, and I can understand why the victims would want a speedy trial too, but it's not their right to waive. For a trial date is, is pretty hard. It's hard. Um, and that trial may actually end up being more like three or four months as opposed to six weeks, which is what prosecutors suggested. So when we do get a date, maybe which is also going to be brutal on the family. 2025, maybe late 25. You're going to have to pencil in a long one. All right. 
So then we'll hop over to the Gonsalves parents who share more details about what they're learning. And again, I was just talking again, the friends I'm hanging out with up here about this case, they don't know a ton about it. We talked about some of the holes, some of the issues, how we think the state probably has more than we know about right now. So we've got to kind of wait and see when the trial comes. To them, it sounds a little sketchy, but you know, we talked about the gag order, confidentiality, the victim stuff that we don't want to bring out. Um, so there's a lot we don't know. And even stuff like this, these little details that come out, we don't know. And we don't know how each side plans on using them as the state to prove that it was Brian Koberger or how Brian Koberger and his team plan to use it to say, couldn't have been Brian Koberger. It wasn't Brian Koberger. Must have been two people, maybe. Whatever their arguments are going to be, you better believe that each team of lawyers is looking at every piece of evidence and every detail a different way in a way that will best serve their interests. So let's take a listen now. It's it's tough to hear, but it is new details. And these are going to be the kind of things, unfortunately, that we're going to hear in this three to four month trial. So we've got to be ready for some disturbing details to come out and see how this evidence. And again, we've got to make sure we can separate just because it's disturbing, just because it's horrible, just because it's sad, just because we wish it never happened to these poor kids and these families. Doesn't mean it was Brian Koberger. The state still has the burden to prove that he is connected and he did these horrible things. And if they can, throw the book at him. And the penalty phase to me, I think should be pretty simple for this jury. I don't want to get ahead of myself, but we'll see if they can actually prove he did it. Because I think that's still the big question in everyone's mind. Not how horrific that is, this is or what potentially the penalty should be. So let's take a listen here. Just left in limbo. This morning, Kaylee Gonzalez's parents sharing exclusively with GMA never before seen pictures and videos of their 21 year old daughter. This is a type of, you can like season with these, you can't like, really season with them, but you can cook with them. Yeah, I know that's in front of the tower. Yeah. This is at the, in front of the University of Idaho Tower. Mm -hmm. The family still waiting on a full digital copy of Kaylee's phone from authorities. These are the Sunday. last moments of your child's life, and you're sitting here fighting with somebody who just doesn't care. They were able to collect some of Kaylee's belongings from the university over the summer, which raised concerns for them about how well possible evidence was processed, including a trash can from Kaylee's room that was full and appeared untouched. We opened it. It was a little um, squeezy applesauce thing that you would give to like a toddler. Yeah. It did not appear to have been gone through. Police saying they had gathered more than 100 pieces of physical evidence from the scene, along with some 4,000 photos and 3D scans of the residents. Still, and again, that's probably part of the 51 terabytes of data the defense has to go through. Frustration mounting for the family over what they consider a lack of communication and a rush to tear down the home on King Road. Christy no doubt and no argument that they are not happy with a lot of different ways in how this investigation was done. Describes for the first time how Kaylee was found. It's my understanding Kaylee was kind of sitting up yes. and had fought. Yeah. And the way that, that room's put together, if you come through that door, you can't get out of that room. Completely, totally trapped. You're in tiny, a bed. tiny room. The bed, the, the bed was the, the entire room. You could barely open up the door without swiping the, the foot of the bed. And so basically, if you've seen some college rooms, apartments, if you have a bed in there, queen size, king size, whatever, sometimes basically you just open the door. There's the bed, maybe a little dresser, and that's basically it. There's no room basically between the walls and the door. So she couldn't escape by running, which to me, maybe it's some details that the states can be able to use. This is how one person did it. This is how they trapped their victims in the room, did this nasty, horrible deed in that room, but it's not like it was some huge room where they were chasing people around. Instead, they were trapped there, um, and, and maybe some of the details show that the victims fought, but there was really nothing they could do, and they were overpowered by um, an individual defendant, which is what the state's theory is and has to be as they go forward against just Brian Coburn. It was wall, wall. You know, the headboard was up against the wall. The side where Kaylee was on was up against the wall. And if you can imagine Kaylee in an upright sort of position up in the corner, slumped. I mean, she was trapped. The home on King Road was torn down in the pre-dawn hours of December 28th. So, again, they explain in those details about how she was trapped, how she was found, 
And, and those are details we've never heard before, right? And these are just little snippets that are trickling out, which show me the biggest thing that tells me is there's so much we don't know. There's so much more to this story. It's going to come out. And again, each side is going to use these details to prove their theory of the case. And the other side's going to use it to fight the opposition's theory of the cases. So that's what it's shown on here. It's no surprise. It's a gut punch to the family. They're upset. They're sad about this potential and inevitable delay. It may not be the last one. Again, once speedy trial is waived, this stuff is not surprising. Um, let me know what you think of the new details. Let me know what you think of the trial date. I'm interested to hear your opinion on the victim's position and what they think and what they feel about how this process is going judicially and just in the media. Thanks for being here. Um, I'll catch you guys on the next one. Till next time, I'm out of here. Thanks for watching another episode of The Lawyer You Know. If you enjoyed the episode, please hit the thumbs up and share with your friends who may be interested here on YouTube. And don't forget to subscribe. You can also follow us on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, and TikTok. And don't forget to check out The Lawyer You Know podcast with new seasons dropping every quarter. If you have a case you want to talk to us about, if it's a personal injury case, wrongful death, catastrophic injury, car accident, or slip and fall case, please email us at lawyeryouknow at gmail.com. And of course, all these links I just mentioned are included in the description below on this episode and every episode. So until next time, this is Peter Tragos, the lawyer you know.